Okay, this is Sand Driving 101. Stay tuned for all the tips and tricks and information I can give you for driving on sand. This is a nice light little Suzuki and it's on 10 PSI. Okay, so we're down at Robe. We've got a tiny little light Suzuki Vitara on 10 PSI. And this is kind of a pretty standard track in and out of the beach. All right, it comes up. We're gonna give you some information on how to avoid getting in a situation like this, but not too much because we've got a car over the other side of the dune. We're gonna let the tires down to get out of this situation, let them down a bit more and back it down the hill is about our only choice, but more information soon. Done. Okay, now we've got the next one. He's a Mitsubishi. He just wants to go down this hill where it's a bit, you can see what's going on here. You're driving along the side of a sand dune. Won't be doing it. Not worth the risk. More information coming. Just going to show you this guy going over this hill. See how it turns out. I made suggestions about doing a bit of track building, moving some sand from the high side to the low side. One went down, you saw that. Did okay, but it started squirming off of the side a little bit. A bit of luck involved. He's having trouble getting going from where he is. We're going to have a look down there, eh? Alright, here he comes. He's back down along the beach. Going for it. Keep it moving. Oh, yeah. He's blood will be pumping now. Stop. Stop and have a rest if you want. There he goes, well. job done, beautiful. Bit of luck there. Well. Alright, so we got the vehicle that was stuck out safely and a couple of others went over it and made it okay. But we've decided uh, probably not the best track, so we're going to use another track to get to the beach. Alright, so we're going to call this one Sand Driving 101. What do you need when you go sand driving? And what information have I got for you? Well, you've certainly got to be really careful when you're out on some beaches that have got soft sand. There's a lot of people with no experience that end up in beaches with soft sand and end up bogged and losing their cars or nearly losing their cars. We have saved a few people from that. So it'd be good to avoid it. So if you can, share this video because hopefully uh, well, I haven't been, managed to get bogged on sand without doing it on purpose so far in my years of driving Prados, etc. So hopefully I can give you the tips and show you how to avoid the same. So what's the first thing you need for driving on sand? Well, the first thing is you need to watch this video. Okay, we're going to run through the idea of what you've got to do to drive on sand and that is you want to drive on it exactly that. you just got to excuse me for a minute, I've got march flies all over the joint if you're having a go at me so just a little distraction. The idea is to stay on top of the sand. Now what we've done, we know this beach is usually a little bit soft, it can you know get a lot worse and there's a lot of different tyre pressures you can run and that's probably the first thing we're going to come to tire pressures okay so you can see what's happened here we've decided we're going to uh, stop here and have a bit of a fish we've got our mate over there in the uh, little Suzuki on 10 PSI which you've seen can get even get into trouble on sand dunes and that's why this is really important because it's not just about vehicle choice tire choice and tire pressures it's also about how you use the vehicle and understanding what it is and isn't capable of and there's a lot of other settings in the vehicle you need to change whether you select high range low range when you do it you're best off to do it all before it's too late but look what we've done here is we've got the tires on 20 psi cold okay now in the heat the driving they'll warm up so they're probably a little bit above we haven't driven far but they're probably 22 23 so what's happening here we're not bogged or anything we're not even carrying max tracks or treads or anything like that so we're pretty confident 
we've been around, not big nading or anything. The other vehicle does have recovery gear in it, so and that's usually used to recover other people. So the reason we've gone on 20 psi is to give you an example of how the vehicle does dig into the sand. Now we haven't tried to dig in here. We've stopped to go fishing, and generally what you do is obviously you want to get off the beach. The beach is the road. I mean, you can put, depends how much beach you got. You can park in the middle of the beach if you want. It's all different. You know, if you're at Fraser Island or something, it's a bit different. It's flatter. It's like a highway. There's plenty of room. You might park your car on the water side to fish. You might park right up the beach. Some people can park their rods right in the middle of the road and you've got to go under the fish <laughs> their lines. But anyway, everyone's different. That's all good. Um, so the idea is to stay on top of the sand, right? So you can see one of the number one things you need to go to the beach is crocs, okay? You already know that. Now the girls hate them. The crocs is what you need. There they are. We're going to slip those on to show you what happens with sand. Now all sand's different. There's coarse sand, fine sand. Yeah, you can just see where I've been walking, see these footsteps, you know? Same as we sink in, right? So does the vehicle. It's a lot heavier. So it's about understanding your weight. The more weight you've got, the more of this situation you're going to have. So you want to stay on top of the sand. So how do you do that? The best way to stay on top of the sand is let your tyres down, right? It does a number of things to help you besides you keep you on top of the sand so you don't get stuck. It's easier on the vehicle, right? So, you know, heating up the engine, the engine coolant and the transmission and all the other running gear for that matter. You may as well do it the easy way. Like this bloke over here, look at him, he's doing it the easy way. Right. Hopefully we see that bomb buckle over and we get a bit of uh, fish o action blended in, right? So, how far do you let your tyres down? Well, that's a good question because, again, different places, different sand. You know, if you're on Fraser Island, it's a pretty firm beach. You could pretty well get away with that main beach on full tyre pressures. But, look, don't do that. If you're going to stick to the main beaches that are like highways, I'd probably suggest about 25 psi because that's going to keep you out of trouble generally if you hit a little bit of the inland tracks in and out a little bit. But um, if you're going to be on those inland tracks extensively, you probably want to go down to, and when I say 20, that depends on conditions. Quite often 20 will keep you out of trouble on Fraser, and you're going to be back out onto the main beaches as well. So you've got to have a balance of um, going to a low pressure, but not too low, because um, you know at speed and that sort of thing, and change of direction when you're on low pressure, that's where you can end up in trouble as well. You don't want to do any fast turning manoeuvres when you're travelling at speed on low pressure, especially on sand, because the tyre digs in, okay, this, this can happen obviously even not on low pressures, but it, it can be worse. So you just want to be really careful of that. Gentle steering movements in sand. So the faster you're going, the more gentle they've got to be. And if you're going slow, they've got to be gentle as well. This is the next thing that digs you in. So pressure, you want to stay on top. By letting the air out, it spreads out the bottom of the tyre because that's the flat part, right? It's only flat on the bottom. Spreading your footprint. So if your footprint's double as long, you've just divided the weight of the vehicle on that tyre by two, so there's half as much pressure. So you're only going to dig in kind of half as much, if you know what I mean, and so on. So um, we'll get to more detail on what pressures and how much and how that affects things shortly. But the next thing I suppose is, is I wonder if you can actually hear me. We're out here, a bit of a breeze blowing, it's not too bad. I'm not too sure how the sound's going to go, but I hope you enjoy the scenery and a bit of the natural ocean roaring in the background. Hopefully it's not too much. <laughs> anyway, we're not going to do any of that sort of voiceover editing, whatever, it's just what it is, so hopefully it works out. Now, when you turn, that's the next thing that digs in. So when you come to an exit off the beach, which there's a couple exits up this way, there's the first one this way, which is where they panic and think they've got to take that one. They think they're at the end because there's a bit of a point there you can't get past. The best track is the one right at the end. So you can always go to the end and have a look and get the right one. Um, it's real experience helps, I suppose. So turning, so here's a bloke, he's come down the beach, he's gonna have a look and see whether it's dodgy or not, or did you decide walking's the best option? That's probably a good idea from there. So we're getting distracted again, aren't we? Anyway, turning. So when you get up to these sort of places like that exit and you need to turn to head up the beach, you wanna have a little bit of momentum because generally you're gonna be going uphill. Um, generally, it could be a bit softer sand than usual. Here we go, we've got someone going past, so that's good. Let's have a look at that. And um, generally, right, 
Um, yeah, so generally you've got someone going past. And uh, people have been going up and down the exits, what I'm trying to say, right? So easily distracted, right? So you've got soft sand, you're going up a hill, everyone's been going up and down. Some people don't want to let their tyres down, they've been digging holes, churning up, fluffing it up. Now, a little bit more momentum to get up there, but you don't want to get to it. Like, let's watch these guys see what they do. You don't want to get to it and turn sharply because that's going to dig you in. You're going to lose a lot of speed. You're better off having the speed off yourself. So these guys, they're a bit nervous and fair enough, they're right up the top of the beach already, which is hard to make a turn. So if you come down onto the firmer beach where the water is, but it's not always firmer. So I mean, there's a whole lot of information. If you haven't already subscribed, so you don't mix the next videos on sand driving, you want to get down on the firmer stuff, but not always, it all depends on the beach. We're not going to be able to fit it all in this video. And you want to come in a nice, open, sweeping turn, not a sharp one. And then once you get it straight, a bit of momentum up the hill. Always remembering, when you go over these dunes where the track is, is there another vehicle coming the other way? So always be looking for that and ready to stop dead. You can always back down and have another go, okay? Ready to stop if you've got someone on coming or make sure you keep left. Sand flags are a good idea. Here we go, we've got another vehicle coming down. It's like peak hour. I thought we had a quiet spot here. Well, this will be good. We'll watch this bike go past. One of the locals, so... He's nose slap on the top of the beach too. Around here, that's a good idea to stay up on top of the beach. Bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so tyre pressure. Let the tyres down. What pressure? Like we said, Fraser, 25 there, 20 in land. Look, there's other places. Fraser's a pretty easy sand drive. I'll mean, probably say it's a pretty good spot for you to get started. There's other places, and whether it's different places on the west coast, when I say west coast, probably west coast of Tassie, the south coast, southwest coast, you know Victoria, you can't drive on beaches, but South Australia, there's, the beaches vary around every headland, it can be different, one side can be different to the other, same in WA, all sorts of things along that south coast there, so it pays to know the beach a bit, if you're not sure, it's worth taking a walk to see what the beach is like before you drive onto it, because some beaches, I'll say that you might not get back off, well, if you got all the right gear. So, tyre pressures on these beaches and conditions like this, ideally, you really wouldn't want to be any higher than 16, and you may need to go 15, 14, that sort of thing. It's a good idea to start at a higher pressure on an easier beach, so you get to feel for sand driving, practice some turns um, and things to see what it feels like, and then you know you can still go down, you can go 18, 16, see what it feels like, play around with it a bit, rather than go straight down to 14, and you think you're sweet, and you probably are sweet, but you're not going to get any experience with what to do when it's a little bit harder, you know? Practicing those turns in 18, 20 PSI where you go, whoa, rather than letting it down where you get away with those turns, because one day when you're on 14 or 12, the sand's going to be that soft, that's not good enough, and you can't turn, you're going to need to go lower. So I hope you get what I mean. Practice with that a little bit. Now, you don't want to leave your tyres lower than about 15, 14 for too long. Be gentle. You've just got to watch it in those ruts and turns. You don't want to pop the bead, you know, where the tyre joins the rim. The side of the tyre, and you fill it with sand, and it gets messy, and you're already onto your spare then, okay? So just run through a few things so most important things that you need to go on the beach right one of the most important things if you're inexperienced is probably a couple of mates maybe with experience ideally um, you're going to need some recovery gear basic recovery gear like a snatch trap and recovery points recovery shackles sorry you know the vehicle may have sufficient tow points on it already um, you know bridles to equal equalization strap you know, to between the points at the front. Um, just make sure you know where they are and that they're sufficient for what you're planning to maybe do. And if you don't get yourself too deep in the sand, um, then you should be able to get out pretty easily. Don't dig yourself in, don't spin your wheels. Just think about it, you wanna stay on top. So if you're driving along this beach and you're belting along at 40 k's, low range in fourth, because you're in low range, because that's probably your best option in case things do get soft and give you a bit more grunt. We might move the car soon before this tide comes in and we, we really will be um, talking business then. The tide is coming in, we haven't got a lot of beach here have we? So not too much longer at this spot. We're going to uh, get it out of here and possibly um, let the tyres down a bit more. Uh, make sure you've got something to let the tyres down. A compressor's a good idea, you can always pump them up later back somewhere, but a compressor's a good idea. 
definitely have something to let the tyres down, right? So the sort of things you need, we'll just have a look what we got here, all right? The basics, okay? You can use a tyre deflator like that, all right? You don't have to use one of those. Or you can just use, what do we got? Let's try and find here. It's in the pocket here, it's ready to go. Just a cheap pencil gauge like that, they're very accurate. You just use the back of it, not just the back of it there. That little divot there to, um, you know, let it down. So, you need to be able to let your tyres down. Your probably next most valuable tool is your shovel. Don't go on the beach without a shovel and have it handy somewhere to get to like that. It's not taking up any space in the car. It's always with you. You've got a portable toilet and you can make a track and dig yourself out of just about anywhere. A chainsaw and a shovel, just about anywhere, depending on weather conditions. Alright guys, so let's um, bag it up and see if we can get out of this spot, and if not, we'll let the tyres down a bit more. Alright guys, so here we go, had a bit of a muck around on 20 PSI, we haven't let the tyres down anymore yet, and this is what I'm trying to say, this is where you get your experience, and you learn to see what you can get away with on, for example, 20 PSI, now, don't use these exact numbers, it all depends what beach you're on, as I said, your best option is always to go with a mate, or a couple of mates, probably three cars, and people with experience if you can, um, go and borrow yourself a set of, uh, you know, treads or max tracks. I wouldn't necessarily say you need to own them if you drive right. I own them for years, never used them, except for on other people. So, what I want to point out here is, just quickly, on 20 PSI, you can see that it's way too much pressure still, okay? I've walked on it a little bit, just having a look at it, having a chat with Debbie over there, and um, you can see how it's all dug up, right? Now, that's, if you're digging ruts that deep, you're still too high, the car's working, let it down, because the sand could get softer and then you could get stuck. Now, what I didn't finish saying before was, if you come to a stop, okay, if, you can't, if you're belting along the beach, it's all good, and you come to a stop, let it stop. If you can feel it and you're working it and the tyres are spinning but you're moving and it's slowing down, give it up okay what you do you don't keep on the gas spin the wheels and dig yourself in you take your foot off the gas you let yourself come to a stop as it does no brakes just naturally let the car behind you know if you've got something behind you because it'll stop pretty quick that's the resistance in the sand all this digging in going on right now what's going to happen you're either just going to work it real hard or you're going to come to a stop anyway and then you're going to be dug in further where you're not going to drive away from it so you let it come, this is the really important part guys, don't hit your, don't even use your brakes in the sand. Flat, hard highways, obviously you need to slow down eventually, use them when you need to. But when you're coming to a stop in sand, don't use your brakes. Just let the vehicle naturally come, and that's the sort of speed you should be driving at, you should be able to do that. Um, let it come to a stop, then what you can do is, your whole problem is you're in soft sand, right? You're at this awesome beach and you just want to get your bathers on and go for a swim and you can't be bothered letting your tyres out. Nah, this is what you've got to do. You've got to let the tyres down a bit more, right? If it's that bad, you probably want to drop another full PSI. Depends where you are, you know what I mean? Hard to say. These are things you're going to have to play with depending on your vehicle. This is the basic sand driving basics 101. Because there's 101 things, at least I can tell you about sand driving. But like I said, we're not going to fit it all in this video. So let it come to a stop. Then what you can do is get out. Get your passengers to help too with your deflator or if you've got those little pencil gauges, hey, get four, they're like two bucks each if you go to the right shop. For ten bucks, everybody in the car can do a tyre, so yep, yeah, we're going down to 20 or now we're going down to 18, whatever, get the kids on the job and um, they can learn about it too, they can learn about it early because, you know, they might need to know. Um, you know, you shouldn't need to go down more than about 14 on most beaches, okay? 14 to 16 is a good sand pressure kind of soft sand we're going to get into some areas you should just <coughs> excuse me really stay away from I think it might be beer o'clock soon it's going to be beer o'clock that's going to be probably the end of this video 
Should I have a couple of beers and then finish the video? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it could be entertaining. We'll see. Anyway, I hope you get the drift. Let it come to a stop. Don't work it. Don't dig yourself in. Don't sit there spinning your wheels. Now, if you started going up a sand dune or an exit off a beach and it slows down and it comes to a stop and you've stopped and then you try to go again, you're wasting your time. You were already moving up the hill and came to a stop. There's no way you're going to get going again until you do something different, okay? Key word, until you do something different. The biggest one is probably going to be letting your tyres down. But there's other things. We've still got to talk about low range, high range, diff locks, whether they work or not, whether they help or a hindrance, LSDs, traction control and all this sort of thing. There's a whole lot to it, right? So just make sure if you haven't already subscribed and you'll cop that next video. I'm not saying I'm done yet. I'm just reminding you while I think of it. Right, so you come to a stop, let's say like we have now, you let them down from 18 down to 15, and then gently, this is the thing as well, gently, do not just go boom on the gas. You're going to spin your wheels. You're on a soft surface. Look at it, sand. You're in a sand pit. You're in the world's largest sand pit. Well, not the largest. That's in, we know where that is. But you're in a you're in a big sand pit, right? It's playtime. You're having fun. You just drive off gently. Once you get moving, hey, then you can gas it if you want to have some fun and flick some sand to fill you. Have your window down and fill the car with sand. And might even give you some sandblasting back in the face if you're lucky. Yeah, been there, done that. So. You let your tyres down, gently try and drive off. And if you can get moving gently, you've solved your problem. Because before it was doing it hard. Now, you, the hardest thing in sand is to get going again, right? So if you can get going, you're sweet. Build it up slowly into next gear. Get a bit of speed. Don't speed past where there's people and whatever, you know what I mean? Be careful. Exits off beaches. We don't want people on <coughs> 30 or 25 PSI or even 20. If you're on one of those steep, soft exits that... We don't want you flying off at 60 k's an hour, it's dangerous. There could be people walking on the beach, whatever. So if you're on a beach with soft sand exits, you're going to have to let your tyres down to keep it safe for everyone. Now, what I want to point out before is here, we've had a bit of a play around. You can see where we first drove off, right? We've parked up here. I can't show you the spot, but you saw how well the tyres were dug in. It was around, it was right about here somewhere. I think I've driven over it again, right? So we've driven off, you can see the tracks down around here, okay? And we put the foot in the gas a little bit. You can see we sort of cut it up. We went up the beach, turned around, did a couple up and down just to see what it was like. Now, when we first parked here, like the little zoop on 10 PSI, it did it pretty easy. It's not really dug in too much. We dug in a little bit at the front without pushing it because that's the nature of the beast, right? You've got a, it's a pretty light vehicle, this one, but it is a lot, a lot Prado, I should say, but it is quite a heavy vehicle. And what happens is, so there's a whole lot of information here. When you're on a hill, the weight of the vehicle transfers to the low side, right? So as the back goes up, the weight comes off the back and the weight goes on the front. See how the vehicle it looks low at the front, it looks high at the back, and this often happens. That's why when you measure your, your lift and all that, you've got to make sure you're on perfectly level ground because it can transfer. If you're on a slight hill, whatever, if you've got, you know, you can't kind of adjust two ends of a car at once with height. Let's say if you said you wanted your 20mm too low at the back, this is going off topic quickly, and then you adjusted that, well, it's going to change the front because the weight transfer each side of the front and rear axle. It's pretty complicated, so we'll just leave that one alone. But what I'm trying to say is the front got heavy, and without accelerating much on 20 psi, the front, it sort of started to dig in. So we weren't going to get far up that hill. Where were the back, where were the back tires? They were... They weren't even halfway up this little mountain, right? Now, what we've done this time is to show you, if you're at a beach with a hard exit, oh, this looks hard and it's rough and choppy and soft sand, I'll let you look at that. I'll let you have a look at that scenery while I'm driven on. Right, there's Devo still having a fish over there. No luck yet. If I drop the phone, go, that's because two rods are buckled over at once. I'll give him a hand. I think one of those is mine. Anyway. Um, so what we want to do is you want to make you want to pave the way call it you want to pave the way what, and look at this you know what i'm going to mention this while we're at the rubbish can you please take your rubbish with you i'm sure none of you people watching this video will leave rubbish on the beach but right here rubbish i mean some things float off boats people lose their hats and whatever but you know what clean up as we go anyway can you people please not leave their rubbish on the beach there's an empty um spirits bottle up the beach there, I'll go and get that afterwards as well that I nearly ran over just on the side of the next one on the tracks. But anyway, shocking. Anyway, 
back on top, so you're easily getting distracted off topic, but it's all important messages, right? So tell at least one other person, can you please put your litter in the bin? If everyone that watches this does that, and then tell them, tell one other person, <coughs> it can only help, hopefully, you know what I mean? Anyway, so what, what you want to do, you want to pave the way, right? What's paved the way? Well, this beach was really soft sand. You can see how soft it is. But right here where we've driven back and forward, which you saw in the video, hopefully, I'm walking on it now. It's firm as. You could drive up and down this all day. It's like a highway. Now, I showed you my footprints in the sand before. They were quite deep, about an inch deep, right? You're talking about 100 kilos walking in the sand, right? Look now. I'll go down. I don't know if you can see this with the lighting. But you can hardly even see a footprint. It's just flattening out those little bits in between the um, in between the treads of the tyres, right? So anyway, the point is, you don't have to make it the first time. So say you've got to get off this exit off the beach, right? Everyone's watching and you're all nervous. Just take it easy and relax. Make sure your tyres are right. Momentum is your friend, but not too much. And when it's not, when it's not working out, you get on the gas a little bit, but don't get on the gas too much because you're just going to dig, right? Just let it come to a stop and back nice and straight, straight exactly back down that same path you went up on. And then at the bottom when it's flat again, or you're in the firm wet sand at the bottom, depending what beach track, you might be at Fraser Island going across Inskip Point, not Inskip Point, um, or, you know, or, yeah, whatever it's called up that end, the other end, you know, too many names of places I forget. What's it, what's it called? Uh, that, that, up the end there, damn it, you know, it, before the Champagne Falls, you know what I'm talking about, if you don't look it up. We've got people coming up the beach, so that's awesome. We'll watch them go past. But what you want to do is, you want to just go up, down slowly. What, and that's what I've done here. You saw in the video, and it's kind of like paved the way for us to go up. We're going to give these guys a bit of a uh, video as they go past. Bada boom. All right, we've got another one coming. Now, so you get that, paved the way. So what I did here, I drove down. I backed up. Only made it to like here without trying too hard. I went forward, I backed up, no extra speed each time, and you can do that. There goes another one. They're all going for it, right? Which is cool. you got to go for it sometimes. Um, paved the way. So each time I came back, and you can see, I've come forward again, I hope you saw that in the video, but you can see, not dug in at all whatsoever. No dug in. Right? And the vehicle, without even trying, went up this sand here, Right? It might have looked fast in the video because it was time lapse, right? But it come up here, it would have went all the way. I just didn't want to go over this top track and upset that, you know what I mean? Because I'm trying to be considerate sometimes. But anyway, um, that's the deal. And we just rolled down to where we wanted to be. Now, so if you are fishing on the beach, it's not a bad idea depending what beach you're on. And if you're on your own, the first thing you probably should do is prepare the vehicle in case you do have trouble or to prevent having trouble getting out because when you finish fishing and you've got a truckload of fish right you don't want to have trouble getting off the beach and didn't realize you were stuck when you left it last minute because the tide was coming in if you're having a good day catching a bunch of whiting or whatever right so see not dug in so just a little tip pave the way right and that also leads to why don't you just let Follow the vehicle tracks that are already there. Follow the vehicle in front of you. Sometimes that's good. It's usually good, but not always. Okay, so you saw a, a free hat down there on the beach. Hats everywhere. What's going on? Here's another one. Oh, I found that many hats. I was at Lake Epilock the other day. There was a number of hats there as well. Here's another one. What's this? That one's been there a while. It's rotten away and all. Anyway, we'll get that. We'll put that with our collection of rubbish. Um, the point is, stick on these tracks. These are quite hard, okay? It's a little bit soft, but it's quite firm because people are driven on it. If you haven't worked it out, we're in South Australia. We're not far from Robe, and quite a lot of the beaches from here down along a lot of directions the other way also to uh, Carpenter's Rocks, this way, direction. And a lot of the beaches going further north of Robe can get quite soft and steep, okay? So what I'm gonna do now I'm going to go and have a frothy and I'll see what else I can come up with to add into this video. Thanks for watching so far. Sit tight. Time for you to get a frothy. Except you won't get the time because we're going straight into the next bit of video. Okay, so I was on a bit of a roll with the information and I seem to have uh, pretty well covered most of the things that I wanted to. So I'm just going to have a think about. 
about what else there is to tell you, see something on the top of it. If you're out on the beach anywhere, take your rubbish with you. This is a little collection we've done within about 20 metres of us. Two hats, don't worry about a couple of those, those, those four cans are ours, don't worry about that. But that bottle, the hats, a um, few things come off boats, you get that. And that's my stubby holder. We're going to clean all this up and take it with us anyway. But um, I hope that's been helpful in some basics and I suppose a little bit more advanced sand driving. I know a lot of you have been on sand and you know what you're doing, but hopefully it opened up your mind a little bit to get you thinking um, about a few of those things we mentioned in the video and something for the new guys to have a think about. Um, and I'll say it again, just quickly to recap, if you're new to sand driving, you probably want to pick some easier beaches first. Go with someone that's had some experience if you can, okay? If you don't know someone that's had some experience, well, get on some of our groups on Facebook because we do trips every now and then. If you've got a Prado, it's Oz Prado crew. We've also got other groups. I can't even remember what it's called. What's it called? Oz 4 Before Adventures or something like that. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. Subscribe to this channel and I'll try and get you some more information to the other groups we've got. Like I said, we have trips from time to time and there's no better way to learn when you're out there and with people that sort of know what they're doing that can help out and most people are pretty happy to help out. Last thing you want to do is go out on your own. Um, some of the beaches where people get in trouble, Stockton Beach can be, it's a, a popular one that it's not, you know, that's when I say popular, it's well known. And so, some of the beaches, and I'll just touch on this a little bit, they can be quite steep toward the ocean. So it's not like Fraser Island. So if you're a, if you're a banana bender, if you're from Queensland, and you're used to Fraser Island, the beach is nice and flat, therefore it's nice and firm. <coughs> Type of sand, it packs down pretty well. I've never seen, I don't think, soft sand on the beach at Fraser. A little bit softer on the back of it on the west side of the island right? um, but I suggest you don't go out there until you've got some experience behind you um, these beaches down here are broke there's some they just vary with the weather conditions and the tides and um, different times of the year summer is probably your best time to get on these beaches they can get pretty bad in winter the fishing's been pretty average so we're packing up we're getting out of here and um, Bada bing, bada boom. What else can I tell you? Yeah, go with someone that's got some experience. So if the beaches are really steep, they're the ones that are going to suck you toward the water. You go onto a steep beach that's narrow and steep, you know what I mean? Like this sand dune, that's steep. So this beach, that part there, sort of almost flat. But as you look further up the beach, see this bit of a hilly? Some beaches, if it goes like that all the way to the water, don't go on it is my advice okay once you've got some more experience and lots of recovery gear and whatever sand anchors and winches and tracks and treads and tides that are going out not in and these are all things to consider you should always look at the tides and make sure you go on low tide or tide going outward if the tide's halfway out is a good time to go because you know it's you've got that beach and it's just going to increase for the next three hours so you've got three hours of really good time up your sleeve plus a little bit more and it's going to start coming in so don't do anything silly uh, when the tide's coming in all right guys hope that's helped um we might recap on a couple of little things the best things to take for sand driving obviously a full drive know how to use everything in your vehicle first low range diff locks track control off and on and you know all sorts of stuff like that be prepared and and let your tires down have equipment to do that and do it before you get stuck ideally um, a compressor to pump up your tires i do like the arb compressor you get the double pumper if you want but what's the hurry um, i've used the standard whatever it is the whatever ck mate 12 whatever it is in the 120 for about nearly six years that's been fine we had a portable compressor before that that was fine as well just save space in the car we're touring with a family usually so we need maximum space in the vehicle to be able to travel light so the compressor goes under the bonnet and the shortest wires to the battery is best as well and we've got one of those to install into this vehicle which isn't actually installed yet so yeah you can go on the beach without a compressor if you know that when you come off the beach you can get to a servo or somewhere to pump up the tires or 
your mate's going to help you out sort of thing but it is good if everyone's got their own compressor um, you definitely need to be able to let the tyres down and read the pressures don't take a stick with you you need I'd suggest at least two things have a backup plan you might have one of those quick deflators and you might also have a pencil gauge just to double check it or you can have four pencil gauges and your passengers can help out um, don't dig yourself in we covered that don't dig let it come to a stop gently get going again let your tires down make sure you know how your vehicle works we might talk about how the, the buttons in the vehicle how they work later in this video or it might be the next video if you haven't already subscribe turn the bell on so you get notified when you get the next most important information all right guys thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it see ya Well, the 150 made it up on 16 PSI. Another bend back down beyond those bushes. I felt it was a bit soft. So as I came around and I saw this, I figured the sand would be similar and dropped it down to 16 because I always want to be able to, um, you know, go a bit further. And 16 did it, but just because someone's really made a mess of it here. As I said, this hill's a little bit harder because it's a little bit soft sand. But we've had people here that don't know what they're doing with high tire pressures digging holes which means you can't keep your momentum you're bouncing around and makes it a bit harder but we got over it all right on 16. Um, this vehicle we let the tires down a bit more as well but it's very light so even though the pressures are low they're still very round and this is a classic case of what you don't want to do when you're backing down you've got to concentrate to stay in the ruts and stay in the track where you're going backwards this is a bit of uh, miss steering and put the vehicle over that side and it's a little bit uh, you know awkward now but we'll sort it out we're lowering the tire pressures at the moment and then we'll just get it on the track and um, give it another crack and get up there we might even fill some of the holes up the top a little bit make it easier for people Okay, so we've just got over that bit of a jump. They prove a little bit harder than some of the other driving we've done today. We're just going to cruise through here, still on, still on 16, because I suppose maybe we're looking for a challenge. And there's plenty of room to move after that. Yeah, what's over here? This is your problem a lot of the time. You can't see, so you do need to slow down to make sure you don't go the wrong side once you come over the crest. And also, in case there's someone racing up the other side, because it's a hard one, and they need a bit of momentum. So either way, people need to be keeping an eye out on those crests for oncoming vehicles, because you, you want to stop at all costs. It doesn't matter if you're going to get stuck or whatever, better than a head-on, right? So keep your speed safe. on the scan I think the left option here is to the beach and it's there's no other exit off the beach so we will keep heading this way I think this is all quite firm sand so sort of stuff where you wouldn't have any issues Get, get 
turn the UHF down, it's just on the scan. So it's always good to have a UHF, talking about things you need, what you need and what you need. It's very, you know, there's a number of things you do and don't need, if you know what I mean. So that one's, yeah, you can discuss that one. Because it depends on your driving skills and your whole vehicle setup. But it's always wise to have a UHF if you're travelling anyway. I'm just going to wait here for a minute and not lose my following vehicle. I'll call it my recovery vehicle, but I think I'm the one that recovers in. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. So you can see this sand is not, the ruts aren't there, so you've got a fair idea it's firm when you don't see the ruts. If you see ruts, you, you know, with experience you'll be able to pick soft sand this sand we're going down there it's not soft sand it's just people have gone too fast one person spins a wheel somewhere because they don't let the tires down then the next car jumps over that it lands spins a wheel and it just gets it snowballs from there it just gets worse and worse on the same holes and that's why we're going slow otherwise you're just going to be bouncing around over these holes and we can because i don't think this is that soft it's a little bit softer up here so we're going to get a bit of momentum try and pick a line that's not in the holes doing it fairly easy really so it's not what I would call soft sand but it is a little bit soft you know for beginners luck it's a bit soft uh, people if you've got your pressures up too high you're going to come to grief that's why it was all rough and there's all holes in it all these people that don't want to let the tires down I know I'm repeating myself but there's a rabbit a hare a rabbit no it's a rabbit there he is what's he doing sitting out in the sun Yeah, he's just sitting there on the side there is not too fussed about anything. <laughs> this is all the tracks in around the dunes out the back of the road. There's a lot of tracks out here. Um, you can can get information from the um, parks information centres and that. I can give you a map on that. And we will just follow along this fence line. Is our way out for today so on that note we'll end the video hey guys thanks for watching if you haven't heard me say it already subscribe turn notifications on give us thumbs up if you like the video see ya